Hey guys, my name is Ram Powdell. I'm a CPA and a CMA from Ontario, Canada. Today I chose a topic about bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation is one of the important tasks uh, to prepare the financial statement at the month end. So if I hear that any company has a problem to reconcile their bank, then I would be worried about the financial statement they present to the owner or they present to the you know, boss. It will be a real problem because there could be a lot of transactions that had to go into P&L or balance sheet but which did not. So what is a bank reconciliation we are talking here? Just think about your personal bank that you know you also keep record internally that how much money I do have in the bank. If you write a check, you may record there that oh I wrote this check or something. When you go and look at the bank, then you give a check to your friend, you know, $1,000 and you go and you look at the bank balance. That $1,000 check, your friend did not, you know, deposit into the bank. Then what happens? You see that your record, based on your record, then you have a lower balance in the bank. But when you go and check in the bank, you do have a higher balance. Because your friend, you know that your friend did not go to the bank and deposit that check and draw gas from the bank, right? So... The bank reconciliation is a process that explains the difference between the bank balance shown in the company's bank statement as supplied by the bank and corresponding amount that you track in the company's records, which is your ERP system. You do have a precise GL account then that GL account will show a balance on a, a particular point in time, right? Every time you can go, you can check your GL balance. And GL shows one balance, but the bank statement shows the different balance. Then there is a problem, right? You feel that, oh, there is a problem. But no, in reality that you just need to reconcile between what you have in the bank statement and what you have in your general ledger account. So how do you do a quick formula for the bank reconciliation? I'll teach you very simple. What you need to do is you just go and look at the balance as per the bank statement at, at the end of, let's say January 31st, 2024, you put it there what is the balance you see on the bank statement? Because remember, your main document is your bank statement, not your GL. People are not going to believe your GL balance. First, they will go and they will look at the bank statement and will try to see what is the balance they see on the bank statement. And then they come to the GL is just your general laser account it's a home you know any transaction banking transaction you do that's the home that GL account is and that GL account will hold all those transactions so then what you do is you look at the outstanding checks and you deduct outstanding checks you deduct from the bank statement then that's the balance you should see uh, your GL balance if you don't see that, then it's a problem. It's a real problem. You need to find out. So why you need to reconcile the bank statement? So let me tell you that. Why you need to do that? I, I, I uh, was saying before that it will be a real problem if company does not reconcile the bank statement. It's a real and a real problem. I would not feel comfortable if company does not reconcile the bank uh, balance. So the first one is to find out the fraudulent transaction. If there is any fraudulent 
transaction with any fraud you know fraudster like you know any 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 fraud transaction occurs in the bank statement then of course you cannot identify if you do not reconcile your bank next thing is to find out the cash in the bank account if you don't reconcile your bank you don't really know what's the real cash because you might have a lot of outstanding checks you have issued already but you know you may not have the sufficient balance in the bank account if you don't then that's a problem because that will be the nsf check non-sufficient funds check so if that happens then it's not a good situation or of course to find out the total outstanding checks you know how much we uh, how how much you know total dollar outstanding checks we have issued that uh, our like uh, suppliers uh, did not present to the bank or they have not received the checks so next thing is ar aging also that right so you need to always apply the cash you have received in the bank statement apply properly and see that there are no bad receivables sitting in the aging uh, report so i always be extra extra cautious about the ar uh, report because ar is the i always say the cash is king when you say the cash is king where the cash comes it's your ar so you have to keep your ar current or if there is any old receivables you need to follow make sure you do that and also to justify the accuracy of the financial statement you always you know if you don't reconcile your bank and then you go to someone and say that oh i published the financial statement and <laughs> if you don't even reconcile your bank statement or bank reconciliation process you don't go through that then that's 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 not, not real your financial statements are not real so bank statement when i talk about bank statement bank statement is the statement maintained by the bank you can go and you can download the pdf copy you know from your online portal or you know your bank login and if you look at your bank statement uh, uh, a, a bit close then you see that there are two side uh, on the bank statement one is a debit other one is a credit so all your withdrawals or payments that you see on the uh, debit side and all your deposit you see on a credit side so if you are confusing that why you know all the deposit is in the credit deposit should be the debited because why they are doing credit i understand that it's just a confusion but they are doing from the bank side if you look at the bank any deposit uh, go there it's not the bank money it's a kind of the liability they have and that's the way they are doing any debit withdrawal then it's a good that you know we are reducing our deposit money we have in the bank that's the way they they, they have done but if you have any confusion one of the video i can i can even create for the bank statement you know just just to make you more clear about the bank statement because if you know the bank statement well like you know how uh, the transaction appear in the bank statement and how to trace you know all the withdrawals all the deposit all the check like you know how when when checks uh, get cash like how to trace that um, how to trace the unidentified you know cash if you receive that what you need to do so let's uh, hear the explanation so any uh, like some of the outstanding checks as i said outstanding checks are the checks that your suppliers did not take those checks and uh, did not get the cash from the bank and it could be those checks could be under transit also and maybe some companies you know they print a lot of checks and but the issue they release those checks you know uh, one by one i had that situation in the past when i worked for one of the companies 
we had to present we had to print the checks but we did not release i did not mail those checks on the mail you know right away because we were holding the checks to make sure that we are managing our cash properly so that's the way we were doing so why do we need to reconcile the bank and GL? Because why? The general ledger balance is credited. The bank balance is credited as soon as we print the check. You know, when we print the check, what happens? We debit the accounts payable and we credit the bank right away our bank balance is down so gl is down but if we are holding that checks bank has no idea literally no idea that we printed that check unless we go and some of the system you can go and you can you know just put the che checks on the, on the online portal but in reality that until bank receives that check and uh, verifies that check so bank has no idea that you printed that check uh, in your system. So then what happens? Then you do have a different balance that you see uh, in your ERP system with the bank balance, but the bank statement has the different balance. So generally it takes time, right, to receive the checks, you know, by the bank and then they need to verify the checks, they need to convert those checks to a cash, then only our cash balance will go down. So that situation, uh, bank balance is always in that situation, system bank balance is always lower than the actual uh, balance that appear on the bank statement. Some companies, as I said before, print, uh, you know, checks uh, upfront and then they release the checks, you know, gradually to manage the cash flow. So that's the other reason. And uh, some checks uh, are lost in the transit. It's a real. It, it happens uh, sometime. So that's why we need to reconcile the bank. Bank statement has a different balance and our general ledger has different balance and we need to reconcile that so how do we do this like you know you can just start from the gl balance at the beginning of uh, the period you can start that what is your gl balance beginning of the period then you always look at all the deposit you have during the month plus of course deposit will go the bank balance higher and uh, bank balance will go up when you get the collections or get the deposit from your customers the same way payment when you make payment to the vendors then your bank balance will go down so then you can do the total deposit plus and a total payment minus and what is the net balance that you got during the monthly transactions so you can if it is a lower or higher you may need to draw more cash in a given month uh, or your deposit is not enough or something so when you do that when you add a or b, a and b not or a and b both then that's your gl balance from the system means from your erp system that's your gl balance let's say the first one you had ten thousand dollar then you collected twenty thousand you paid ten thousand in january then you have a ten thousand additional cash you added in the books you know from the january transaction then your ten thousand beginning ten thousand you added so twenty thousand will be the balance you would see in the gl so let's take an example below there are, you know, example, we had $10,000 closing balance in the bank as per the bank statement. So when we look at the bank statement, we see that $10,000 balance we see on the bank statement. But out of $10,000 balance, balance, 
3,000 was the outstanding checks. 3,000 checks we printed in our system, but bank has not received those $3,000 outstanding checks. Means that it's not just only one checks, maybe, you know, uh, few checks that will make up like uh, $3,000. Then let's do a 20, let's do a reconciliation here, here that we say the GL balance reconciliation from bank statement. Let's do that. First, balance as per the bank statement is $10,000 minus outstanding checks 3000 then we got the 7000 when we go and look at the gl then we see the seven seven thousand dollar perfect so your three thousand will be justified from the your outstanding checks report you need to outstanding checks is you always have you know check number there who the vendor you have issued how much amount which date you printed a check right uh, so <clears throat> you can see our uh, details there in the outstanding check section and which is which which is needed for you in fact so there are some transactions i want to show you here you know how you do when you are doing a bank reconciliation maybe just to make you more clear we had a twenty thousand dollar checks was received from customer and was depo deposited in the bank statement. Remember that 20,000, the bank uh, account will be debited, right? So that's the way, uh, $20,000. 10,000 payment was issued to settle the current liability. So now you also issued the 10,000 like uh, payment to your supplier, to your vendor. So out of 3,000 outstanding checks you had before, then 2,000 checks was cash. Means that bank already reduced the 2,000. So means 1,000 is remaining, remaining from there. Out of 10,000 you printed from the system, 9,000 was cash in the same month. So you have another 1,000 from the current month. Remember that you have 2,000 outstanding checks now. You still have 1,000 you printed before. You know, bank did not cast those because your supplier did not, probably they presented, but I could be, those could be lost in the transit, could be anything. So now, balance as per bank statement, 19,000 you have, and you, are, you have a $19,000, like bank statement 19,000 you have, and there are 2,000 outstanding checks in the outstanding check report, which makes sense because you had, like I already um, already explained you how you got $2,000. If that is a case, you're 19,000 in the bank statement, you minus $2,000 outstanding because bank has not received those $2,000 checks, but your system, you have printed in the system, you credited the bank already applied in the GL. So now, when you go and look at your GL balance at the end of December 1, 2024, you have a $7,000 we had, we did here before, you know, $7,000. In fact, uh, this one is a, even, you can t say, you know, December 31st, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it's just an example. Total deposit 20,000, total payment 10,000, so from here 20,000 minus 10,000, 10,000 is added in the bank in a given month. So when you add, you have a beginning was 7,000 plus 10,000 you added during the month, then you have a 17,000. So now you reconcile from the bank statement to the GL balance, you have exactly the same amount. So how to prepare the outstanding checks, you know, outstanding checks. So I am not 100% sure um, how you do, you know, for, for me, I don't want to do manually anything, anything, because even the bank reconciliation, I make everything is, is an automation way. But remember that bank 
reconciliation does not work just only automation uh, through the automation because it's a human it's a human action you need to go through make sure the data is accurate it's not like you just dump the data and then system will evaluate there because there could be a fraudulent you know check there could be a fraudulent transaction you need to like uh, go through work with the bank work with your other colleagues like who collect money and then who pays the invoice so it's a lot of interaction you um, you, you 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 have to go through so do the bill lookup like bill lookup is easy like very easy you can just go to the bill lookup and look at the transactions what you have printed in the system and what you have in the outstanding checks what you have in the bank statement so anything you printed from your system then you see that those checks are appear in the bank statement then those are not the outstanding checks because those are cleared already in the bank statement but if anything you do not see in the bank statement means that you are 100 percent sure that those are still is uh, sitting as a outstanding because bank has to receive and then cash those checks so that's the way you do be look up and then check there make sure it's a double be look up i always do a double be look up because maybe you know the double be look up you don't know the double be look up if you don't know let me know i can i can even post one small you know a small video about the double we look up you know how to do the like compare the two list basically uh, from one list to another another list to another so that you can isolate the transactions there you have to put a red flag while you are doing a bank reconciliation so if your supplier never receives a check that you have issued to your supplier then check might have lost in transit so if that happens, then what you need to do is check is a, or could be you know check is could be still with the company for a signature you have not you know issued the check or maybe company strategy is to you know release the check gradually like you hold the checks and you release gradually but maybe you should you show to your you know, supplier that oh I printed the check already it's just a trick like you know. Uh, some companies they do if they have uh, they, they have a real difficulty to manage the cash flow and they print the check and they hold the check and then after you know week uh, two weeks or something and then when they need to release the check they do release the check right so sometimes system shows that check got printed but it never got printed there was a glitch in your system so that you know you need you need to fix that too and uh, just bring your IT's attention. Hey, you know, this check never got printed, but system shows uh, it is. When you print the check, what happens? I told you already that you debit your accounts payable and you credit the bank. So your bank is accredited. You, you, are, you, you reduce the balance from the bank. And the other thing is, you know, bank has a check there that you see a cash but you never issued that check from your system means that's a real problem like fra fraudulent check so that's a real problem you need to investigate that you need to talk to your bank how did it happen when did it happen you know who took money so you have to open like you have to go through the investigation if it is a wire transfer and then this and that it's it's like different challenge you need to go through while doing bank reconciliation make sure that there is no fraud transaction in the bank statement that's your job that's your job because that's the job you know company has given to you and you need to make sure there is a no fraud transaction while you are doing the bank reconciliation and uh, every transaction you need to make sure that you have a valid like you know you have a proper like source document to justify to justify uh, the, the transaction so the other thing is if the check is a sitting uh, check is a sitting for a long time then you need to do a stop payment and uh, probably you need to reissue that check back to the vendor 
So if you do that, the stop payment process is also different from bank to bank. That's why you need to make sure that you do a proper stop, proper uh, like a proper way to stop that. Otherwise, if you don't do a pro stop, like real stop, then what happens that when you issue a new check, then maybe both checks, your supplier will go to the bank and present to the bank and they will get cash, you know, from the both checks, which will be a problem, real problem for you. That's why you have to, some companies, they have, like some banks, they have a system in the, in the, in a portal that you just have to go and mark there that stop or something cancel or something or you can just choose a region code so this way that you know when supplier or your vendor goes to the bank and presents that check to the bank manager then they will take a look in the system and the system has a note already so that it's a real stop and sometimes when you do a stop check then of course there will be some money you know that uh, bank will charge because of the stop payment also make sure you have a real uh, stop you need to communicate with ar you need to communicate with the person that would signs the check and then someone has to go and communicate with the bank and when they come back and say that yes we have the confirmation from the bank that they put the stop payment then you can reissue a check, then send that check back to the vendor, and then they can get even vendor when you send that. Make sure you get the proper you know, address, proper mailing address. Maybe address was wrong at the beginning. Or ask them that if you can do a, a EFT payment or Y transfer or something. Sometimes you have to pay the fees anyway. So other transaction that impact the bank reconciliation maybe like uh, some of the auto withdrawals like that will come directly from the bank you need to post that to your gl account like weekly payroll if you do have a weekly or a semi-monthly or monthly payroll maybe you have a equipment lease you do have and those lease will withdraw you know withdraw the lease amount directly from your bank account maybe monthly car lease maybe loan payment right that goes directly from your bank account it's an auto withdrawal uh, you you have given the permission to the bank that uh, i mean that vendor that they can withdraw uh, from our bank account like you know this is just uh, just a uh, withdrawal like form you have assigned that also there is a mortgage payment could be like there is a bank charges other expenses or sometimes you can see that some interest on can be uh, can be seen can be seen in the in the bank statement right those you need to book you need to book uh, in um, in in your system uh, other thing is uh, you have any nsf check that you know you you send the check for the deposit but the, the your customer uh, did not have enough money so that you know check got NSF or any reverse check so any other payment business related expenses that happen you know directly withdrawal from there and again the deposit sometimes comes the deposit directly and you need to make sure those all will go to your system as well so this is a long video uh, but the bank reconciliation is a critical process that you need to understand that's why don't skip the video just go through one by one make sure you understand the concept make sure you understand the reconciliation formula make sure you can reconcile from GL to bank bank to GL and then you understand about the outstanding checks you understand about the auto withdrawal amount that is directly uh, you know uh, that that directly uh, comes out from your bank statement but you need to record those you need to identify those transactions and have to have a proper backup proper justification and book the proper journal entry or have a proper backup to record in your system so that you always reconcile your bank statement 
hope um, you like this video bank reconciliation process so if you do you can thumbs up and you can also leave the comments so that you know other people will find this as a beneficial so that they will go through this uh, video also you can share with your friends with your colleagues with your relatives uh, whoever they are in accounting field and if they want to understand the bank reconciliation process and again if you do have any question you can ask me if you want this spreadsheet also you can also send me a message so that i can i can email you back